this I wasn't really paying attention at all that. Let me see if I can figure it out. <clears throat> so we have carbon and chlorine, and we're talking about polarity. Mm -hmm. well, we know that chlorine has a stronger electronegativity, so it's going to be pulling those electrons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our dipole is going in that direction yep. towards the chlorine. <clears throat> and you asked about the molecular polarity. Yes, of th this. Okay, well, the bond is polar, but I'm seeing we have four identical bonds, and they're all opposite each other. Mm -hmm. So th does that mean they like, cancel each other out then? That's right. They do oh. cancel each other out. So the overall pole is zero. That means it's nonpolar. So even though we have polar bonds, we can have a nonpolar molecule. Yes. And some of you might be scratching your heads thinking how that works. Now, let me throw up an analogy for you. Say we have a boulder. Nice looking boulder there. It's brown. And say, attached to that boulder, we have a horse. And then, of course, you tell the horse, hya, mm -hmm. and it'll pull the boulder in whatever direction it's facing. Okay. All right, so that's essentially, that can be equated to the polar bond, in which carbon's the boulder, and then the chlorine is the horse. Oh. The chlorine's pulling the carbon. Now, consider, if you will, four identical horses of the same strength pulling in all different directions. Basically, where each horse is representing one of the chlorines. Exactly. Oh, I get this. This is kind of cool. It's basic physics. Mm-hmm. And show a case of my artistic skills. <laughs> <clears throat> but yes, each horse is pulling with the same strength in all these different directions. Mm -hmm. Is that boulder going to go anywhere? No. That's right. It's stuck. The boulder's going to stay where it is. It's the same case with this. All the chlorines are pulling on the carbon. They're pulling the electrons away from the carbon. They're all pulling in different directions. But in mm -hmm. the end, the electrons don't really go anywhere. Because they're all pulling in different directions. So the net result is, of course, it's nonpolar, the whole molecule. Oh. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Mm -hmm. So that's polarity. That's polarity. No kidding. No kidding. Okay, so we got bond polarity, which is basically the strength between two atoms. Or just one horse pulling a boulder. Okay, and then we have the molecular polarity, which is where we kind of sum everything up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and we can have, inside a molecule, it could have polar bonds, but still be a nonpolar molecule. Yeah. And in the case of this, in case of formaldehyde, it was a case of having, say, you know, your boulder, say the hydrogens were kind of horses, Mm -hmm. But the oxygen is an oxen, big strong oxen mm -hmm. with horns. <laughs> and so the ox, oxen is much stronger than either of the horses are. Mm -hmm. So the horses are going to you know, pull a little this way, pull a little this way. And then you got oxen the oxen is going to go way this way. <laughs> and so, that of course. Sense. That would explain why this molecule is polar. Got it. All right, so that is polarity in a nutshell. Just draw horses. Mm -hmm. Maybe an oxen. Yep. Cool. I like it. Yep. I'm going to go draw some horses now. All right, cool. See you later. Yeah.